everybody, it's Tyler here at The Wave at WPI doing a double feature here today. We got 12X Tropics and 12C Chips in Fish, two phenomenal teams. Of course, here at The Wave at WPI, both performing quite well so far. We're gonna be diving a bit into each robot, focusing on some of the top features of each one of these. Uh, you know, the 12 teams have been so great over the years that we can't wait to see what they have brought here for Over Under. Let's dive into this double feature coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Aaron, let's start out on this robot talking about the uh, ratchet and PTO system yep. that you have brought for this one. So talk to me about what's gone into it. Yeah, we're just going to rapid fire because there's honestly so much to talk about. So um, when we were starting our planning for this game, we realized that um, motor distribution was going to be key. So we wanted to have two motors on our end game, which is this mechanism right here. Um, but we knew that we also wanted a very strong base. So we have a six motor base that PTOs two of its top two motors right here to this end game mechanism. Um, and the PTO is in here. Um, and so then these gears are powered. This is a compound gearing to make this mechanism very strong. Um, and the way that we lock this mechanism on the bar at the end of the match is with this little ratchet right here that moves up and down. And the way that it moves up and down is this piston. So we call it the induced ratchet because the piston fires up and pulls a fishing line um, that's connected to this ratchet and pulls it out of this gear. And then this is free to move. So this can move up and down. And at the end of the match, it comes down. And then we drive onto the bar to make our hang. With this being your second event uh, coming in, is uh, this something that was added on or this originally from your uh, initial design? No, so we've been working on this for a long time. So we knew that um, we wanted to have a PTO on our first robot. So that was kind of, I guess, a constant. But the actual mechanism that went on the PTO um, has constantly been changing. And we took this design from uh, 229V um, they have a really good uh, hang mech, so we took this kind of plastic design from them and we just added to our PTO, kind of uh, married the best of both worlds there. Awesome. Speaking about endgame mechanism, Braden, talk to me about what's gone into that uh, as well. And then uh, I always love to hear, like, what are you looking at doing potentially in future events as well? Yeah, so right now we have a, a, a kind of a standard endgame right now, uh, but some of the unique parts about it um, is that it can move up and down. Since we have our catapult in the middle here, uh, we need this to be able to move forward and back in order to allow us to shoot during matches because we're able to intake into our catapult and shoot during matches and also um, match load. So having this be able to shift down at the beginning of the match is a huge part of allowing us to multitask and do multiple different functions using as little motors and pneumatics as possible. Um, like Aram said earlier, uh, we wanted to save our motors, so this was a great way. At the end, um, we don't have to really use motors all that much to pull ourselves up. It's mostly passive. The motors are mostly just to uh, position ourselves this uh, so then we can move our catapult uh, without interfering. Very cool. As so we start to wrap up, uh, like I said, there's so much to see in this robot, uh, so make sure you check it on the field. But there's this giant blocker uh, that you have as well, too. So talk to me. Yeah, for sure. So, Rivik, talk to me about uh, this giant blocker and the design that went into it. Oh, yeah. So, um, like three weeks ago, uh, before this tournament, we knew that we needed a blocker because people have high shooters, and that's the only really way to stop them from shooting. Um, so, we first started by adding this uh, passive two bar mechanism. So, we have uh, just these two simple C ch uh, L channels going across, standoffs bracing them, and we have some mesh to block the tri ball from going in between here. Um, and this is held in by a screw joint uh, on a pillow block right here. Um, and then we have it banded um, uh, down. We have it banded down. Sorry, four. Yeah, four. Um, and then, uh, since this was actually too short, we wanted to add another segment to it. So we kind of did the same thing here um, and added mesh. Uh, attach it by standoffs um, into the same banding situation so that it can pop up when necessary. Um, and the way we hold this down is uh, with our end game actually. So we have these two um, L gussets, brackets, um, and the intake, since it can slide back and forth, just clips in there. Um, and that's very important uh, so we can say in size uh, before the game. And when the game starts, uh, intake goes down. Sorry, since we don't have motors and pneumatics, it's kind of tough. But it pops up just like that. Um, and when the uh, end game is down, uh, this lets the blocker go all the way back and lets us go under the bar. Uh, 
And you got a little bit of angle to us too uh, coming out here also. It's so definitely great for that uh, blocking area. Well, 12X, thank you uh, so much for that. We're going to be moving over to uh, 12C here, talk about their robots. Let's pass it over uh, to what they're doing. Uh, starting out with Tony. Tony, your uh, skills has been absolutely phenomenal uh, through the season. Uh, so let's start out with Autonomous. What are you doing for that and how has it been so successful? So um, really for Autonomous, uh, we're just trying to keep things as simple as possible. We're, um, we're definitely not as experienced as some teams. I, uh, my teammates are both freshmen, I'm only a sophomore. Sure. So to, to collectively we have less experience than most. So we're just trying to keep it simple, um, make sure uh, what we can do works. Um, but yeah, for Autonomous, uh, our main uh, goal is to get as many tri balls onto the other side as possible and then push them all in. So we start by just backing into the uh, match log bar, do a slight turn. Uh, that turn is actually crucial to getting the um, placement of the tri balls correctly because yeah. otherwise uh, we just throw them out all the way to the uh, other corner. So, and that's just um, hard to push and we don't have uh, the route for that. So, do you have any sort of sensors that you're using uh, during time? Yeah, so we just have the gyro sensor down there. Um, yeah, so it's just one sensor. Um, again, like not anything super complex, just um, a lot of practice, a lot of uh, tuning with it. Uh, that's what we spent basically the last week doing. What advice do you have for teams? Uh, you mentioned, you know, really I think the key takeaway is uh, simplicity can be very successful, right? So what advice do you have for other teams who are looking at improvement skills but might not have like tons of resources at their disposal in order to do a very complex autonomous? Yeah, again, I, I guess you kind of said it, just keep it simple. Um, even if all you can do is match load, that still gets you like 88 points if you get them all over. And um, and then if you can start by building on that, by adding the little route to push it in, like um, we just did, uh, then then you'll start to see your skills uh, rankings uh, creep up to like the 200s and the 300s and so on. Nikhil, let's talk about the uh, kicker mechanism uh, yeah. on your robot as well. Overall, this is a gorgeous design, by the way, for Thank a machine. You. So, yeah. But we're definitely going to focus on the kicker. Talk to me more about it. Um, so basically, we have a 36 to 12 gear ratio right here. And basically, um, originally, we actually had a catapult with a basket. And so we added a lot of rubber bands to get enough force to push it over. But then what happened is the catapult actually snapped in half right here. And so we could cut it off, and then we just have a kicker mechanism right here. So we add two standoffs right here. We added a system, so it's basically just you know punches or kicks the ball over. And the blocker also helps as it serves as kind of a place you know set the tri balls. And we added hard mesh here to as act as a hard stop. And we just you know tension it with some rubber bands so that we get enough force to make sure that it doesn't get stopped in the middle barrier. And then we have a ratchet here to make sure that the motor, the lemma motor, doesn't overheat to make sure that we can, you know, finish our all 22 or 44 tri balls. How quickly are you doing that in a cycle? Um, well, we would get our 44 tri balls over around 30 seconds, and the 22 tri balls we get around 15 seconds, I would say. And um, that's been pretty reliable because in skills, then we have enough time to, you know, get over and even a driver, an auton, enough time to get over, push all the balls in, and, you know, get a creep our score up. Julian, let's wrap up, talk about the uh, climbing mech that you have on there, uh, and also you got a big, uh, nice beefy intake as well too, so talk to me about uh, the final compositions of this robot. So at our last competition, we had a two-part intake, which was actually this old part, or the back part of this um, blocker here. So before when they were connected together, we have found out that um, it was just um, beefy, like you said, it was very heavy, and when the intake would go down, it wouldn't be able to come up. So playing around with like the physics of pneumatics, here we left the bottom pneumatic um, und uh, with no air. So even when there's air and the intake just falls down, these, this, the intake can still go up and down super simple. And with the nice plastic wedge and rubber bands, when we, um, we can outtake and the intake will um, come with the goal. So it would just follow up instead of going under or getting stuck. Um, Let's see, the climbing mech is a simple two pistons on the side, and what it is is this is not able to go under, but using uh, rubber bands, we are able to um, twist down our um, climbing mech. So when we do go under, it goes under, and it comes back up no problem. The two pistons can lift up and actually just lift the entire robot. So normally the pistons would come up, um, 
So when there is no air, it comes up and then snaps down, lifting the entire robot, which is around an eight-tier climb. Well, overall, an absolutely phenomenal family of teams uh, that 12 brings in. So once again, this is 12X and 12C looking great here at, at the Wave at WPI. Can't wait to see what you all do throughout the entire over-under season. So thanks for telling us about both your robots, and good luck the rest of the way.